Good evening everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. This side Rahul Magan here on behalf of Treasury Consulting LLP and today we are going to speak about a very very interesting topic which is futures of three arrow abnomics. As you very well understand nowadays there has been a lot of talk about which is happening about BOJ. BOJ uh, shortly stands for Bank of Japan. A lot of talk, talks happening about BOJ, about their policies, you know, we ha earlier had a video also about helicopter money uh, which BOJ want to implement and there are a lot about that. And if we go just two or three days below, before we get to know that the Japanese registered a GDP growth rate of 0.2% vis-a-vis projected of 0.7%. First of all, we need to understand that 0.7% of a GDP growth is nothing. This is absolutely zero. But still, considering the fact that Japanese economy is in a mess and they are they are doing a lot of quantitative easing, rounds after rounds, round after rounds, and still they not been able to project and anything. 0.25.7% per, matters. But still, even after that, they registered only 0.2%. Now, after that, they came up with something which is known as helicopter money. We had a video about the helicopter money and that again, not sure whether this has been um, uh, approved by the parliament or central bank would like to go ahead with that. Not sure about it, but there are a lot of talks which are happening that, you know, they are still looking for uh, the helicopter money. But today video will take you a very, very interesting fact about BOG, which is economics and all. So we have made this diagram for you and we are going to explain this diagram. So that's how it works. This is Bank of Japan, which is the central bank. And they are ready to do the explicit monetization with the Japanese government. Now, what do you mean by explicit monetization, which is also helicopter money? In the explicit monetization, they are going to print the money and they are going to give the Bank of Japan who will help them in terms of creating inflation and reviving the economy. As a company, as an individual who worked as a corporate treasurer, I am not sure, I have never been able to understand how printing money is able to create inflation. Because if you continue to print the money, there are a lot of money chasing few goods. And of course, inflation would come. But how? That is something which we need to understand. From the last 20 years, almost two decades, Japanese are doing round after round of quantity easing. And in fact, they are not doing quantity easing, they are doing qualitative quantity easing, QQE but still they are getting failed. So not sure what exactly they want, how long for them it will take to, to revive the Japanese economy and so. So the first is explicit debt monetization that is completely failed. Now comes the three arrows of Abi, who is a prime minister of, of uh, Japan, which is also known as economics. One is the fiscal policy, structural reforms and monetary stimulus. Some people will also refer this as a monetary policy, fiscal stimulus, structural reform and monetary policy, but we refer this like, like the way. Do you sincerely think that considering today when trillions of dollars, when trillions of dollars has been put up into the system via quantitative, qualitative, quantitative easing, still there is a scope which is led for economics. Abenomics has been completely failed. Fiscal policy is fiscal fiscal policy is doldrum. Structural reform, I don't know how it is happening. Monetary policy, nobody understands that. Interest rates are negative. If sitting today, I will tell you that 10 years Japanese government bond is in negative. I want you to understand, even in the books, the fixed income market clearly specify that you should have a positive interest rate because that supports interest rate parity. I don't understand if I am a Japanese investor having 1000 yen in the pocket which I am giving it to government of Japan which is here and they in return will give me 980 or 990 or 995 whatever it is that makes sense for me definitely not. Now what else they wanted to do now this is very strange and I, I fail to understand but still we are making a video here we'll try and make you understand and if you get any sense then let us know please. Bank of Japan now wanted to have ETF purchase, exchange traded fund. We all understand what ETF stands for. Now with this they wanted to increase the stakes in the corporate who are in Tokyo and they want to stimulate their balance sheet, which in turn will not will shoot their balance sheet and currently sitting today the GDP to debt ratio of, of Tokyo is roughly 254% which is exorbitantly high in developed nation. First of all, I don't understand that how Tokyo will define defined as a developed nation. Considering the fact that from the last two decades, they are only on QQE and QQE. I don't understand. First side, you are doing ex explicit monetization with Japanese government. 
very new printing trillions of dollars 10 years japanese government bonds is in negative all the three are of the abnormal spilled second side you are going in the etf purchase and you wanted to purchase a lot of etfs whereby you wanted to increase the stake in the corporates and you wanted to revive their balance sheet under the expectation that your uh, inflation will revive you also want to target the inflation targeting inflation targeting to make sure that the inflation will rise but i fail to understand that sitting today there is a cpi which came up from us and you fail to estimate you fail to believe that they previously the cpi was 0.2% they expected to be 0% and actually it is 0% now i wanted to understand united states who is also a kind of brother for japanese who invested who printed so many trillions of dollars and lots of hawks uh hockey stones and etc etc still their cpi is zero how much more money we want to print why we are printing so much money in the world market that all the currencies are turning out to be the fiat currencies the fixed income market fundamentals are changing the interest rate parity is changing there was a time when interest rates were positive now it is negative more than 20 trillion dollar the sovereign debt across the globe is having negative interest rate and i'm sure that if today i'm 32 by the time I turn 45, I think this 220 trillion will turn out to be 200 trillion and could be more than that. It will completely change the dynamics of the fixed income market across the coal. If we have few banks like Bank of Japan who are firing all arrays at same time like explicit monetization, ETF purchase, abnormics, debt to GDP ratio, shooting of the balance sheets, then this will only lead to crash. Before winding up the video, we would like to suggest one simple fact to our viewers, which is that sitting today, Japanese yen has crossed 100, sorry, break 100, and they are trading at 99.80 per dollar. So one dollar is 99.80 yens, which is not good. And there is a lot of prediction which is happening in the market that yen may cross 95. And if this will happen, if this will happen, this would surely have a definite PNL impact on both importers as well as the exporters of the country and especially for the exporter because if an exporter who is exporting in dollar previously he was getting 102, 103 now this gentleman is getting 92, 95, 96 it simply means the state of a loss to his books so Treasury Consulting LLP is not uh, supporting that idea because you are firing too many arrows at the same time if you wanted to revive the economy, you need to revive the economy like China. I'm not saying that People Bank of China is not doing any kind of, any kind of regularization or not doing any, any kind of intervention. They are doing and they should do. But at the same, same time, we strongly don't believe that, that you should only, you, the only way to revive the economy is by Bank of Japan wherein you fire, fire several salvos at the same time with, under, with clear understanding of the fact that none of them would hit the target. This was the presentation about Bank of Japan, failure of three arrows and, ab and abnormics. More are on the way. Our upcoming videos are how the Indian banking system facing the crisis, which is Dhanlakshmi Bank. How the British uh, pension funds are facing $1 trillion, uh, $1 trillion of liability, liabilities and several videos about fraud, forensics and fixed income market. You are always welcome to contact us at Treasury Consulting LLP at the gmail.com and our alternate email ID is Rahul Magan 8 at the gmail.com. Our handheld number is 9899242978. With our Skype connect is Rahul5327. We hereby thank you very much for your time and great to see you again. Thank you.